there's usually one responsible sibling in the family. Um, and, and then that sibling's leaned on not only to take care of their family, but to take care of the elders and things of that nature too. So yeah. it becomes even more so of a burden because you don't have all hands on deck too. It's, it's, it's right. one or maybe two people, two siblings out yeah. of five shouldering the responsibility, both economically and also from a living perspective as well. So uh, yeah. that responsible person in the black community, unfortunately, is actually more penalized. It's more punitive just because we're relied on so heavily for 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 everything. Right. Um, and right. it's not a bad thing. It's a blessing, but it's still something that you got to be a steward of. And it's, and it's not a light load. So, hey, uh, Soulmates, so we're here tonight. Um, actually, this is the first episode of quarter number two. Uh, man, can you believe we've gone through quarter number one already in this year? Insane. Insane, Insane. brother. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, so, man, quarter number one, uh, well, this whole year is about second half living. And in quarter number one, we talked about uh, basically your physical health. Well, your physical, your mental, as well as your spiritual health. Um, and it all started off with uh, Brother Ed discussing uh, the oral your oral health and how that is the gateway to your physical health. And from that point, we brought in Dr. Um, Latanya Ivory, who spoke about your physical health, and she pretty much shared with us some of the key things that uh, men of color and women of color deal with from a health standpoint. Some of those, you know, just sort of underlying health conditions that we kind of naturally deal with as African-Americans due to our diet, due to our upbringing and things of that nature. Uh, then we had Quan Bryant on the show and we sort of talked about just second half living all together. He will be a returning guest uh, as he is a physical um, fitness instructor. So we'll get into that later on down the road. Uh, and then we kind of closed it out on the spiritual side with Bishop uh, Adrian Starks, man. And I thought that was a great show to sort of close out that piece. Yep. And now as we move into the second quarter, uh, we want to start talking about finances and money. Uh, as, as we know, there's a huge wealth uh, gap between our community and other communities. Yep. Uh, I, I think there's some things that we do as people of color, just at, we've missed the mark just because of our upbringing. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's we weren't really taught financial literacy as we as we all grew up. Uh, right. I know for a lot of us, financial literacy was you go to work, you pay your bills, you hope to have some money at the end of the month. And if not, you start all over again. Uh, right. And that's kind of what that was kind of our whole take on financial literacy. With that said, uh, tonight we have a special guest. He's uh, my friend, my brother, uh, Jabbar Jameson. Um, I've known Jabbar now for almost 12 years. I first met Jabbar through my wife. Uh, she had a trunk show. Uh, my wife makes jewelry on the side and she had a trunk show. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was this month. I think it was just a couple of days ago, almost 12 years ago. Um, that was my first time meeting Jabbar. We hit it off uh, right away. He and his wife. Um, Jabbar is obviously a husband. He's a father of three. We just talked about that. <laughs> Bless your soul, brother. I, I totally get it. Uh, he's the father of three little ones. Um, he is uh, from Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, he is also a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, so I'm not going to hold that against him. Uh, super smart brother, knows absolutely nothing about football if he's going to choose that team. Uh, <laughs> but I, I had to stick We ain't even going to get started. We ain't even going to get started. I'll take up a whole segment. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, Jabbar is a uh, graduate. He did his undergraduate work at University of Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He got his MBA from UNC Charlotte, right there in the uh, Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, he is a consummate businessman, consummate entrepreneur, and uh, he's going to help us tonight just to talk about a few things as it relates to your finances, to insurance, uh, and to other investment vehicles and things of that nature. Uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, Jabbar, welcome to the Soul of a Man podcast, my brother. Thanks for having me. Uh I think it's long overdue, but everything in time, right? I I am gonna give you a hard time of that. I'm glad I'm glad that I made made the list for 2024. So 
<laughs> looking forward to the conversation. And um, Chell, it was good to meet you too. Uh, my yeah. first time meeting you and good just look forward to again, uh, hopefully providing some good information and uh, just partake in an engaging conversation. Yeah, absolutely. No, brother, you're right. It's long overdue, man. But we had a special time and a special place for you, brother. And uh, if, if anything before now or anything after now just would not be the right time. So you, <laughs> right you, now. You're here when you're supposed to be. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so B, before, before we jump all the way in, I got to ask, um, the Steelers got a pickup with uh, Russell Wilson. What's your take on it? Uh, I was – not on board when it first happened. I okay. thought it was going to create some friction in the locker room. Yeah. That friction has now gone. And uh, that with the addition of fields, I think we not only have the ability to compete now, but further into the future too. And um, there's some just staunch quarterbacks in the AFC right now. So we needed to upgrade significantly. And, 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 and they finally did the job. So and we got him at a bargain, boy. I tell you what, we got him at uh, big lot prices, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you did. All so right. I, I guess my Eagles won't be the only good team in the state of Pennsylvania moving forward. Maybe the uh, Steelers are uh, uh, somehow bring up a close second, maybe. <laughs> Again, boy, I, I tell you what, boy, they get one championship in uh thirty years, and it's 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 it's, it's sometimes it's, it, now it's equal footing, but it's all good, y'all. You y'all know, all right. and, and I know we're gonna move on, but I'm gonna do you one even better. So <laughs> obviously, Jabbar's a brilliant guy. He married a brilliant woman, but she obviously doesn't know anything about football either because she likes the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> No, no disagreement there. We we both on board. We don't know what happened there. So, <laughs> well, good deal, brother. Good deal, man. Well, look, let's just jump right in, man. Give us a little bit of Jabbar about your background. Uh, we obviously know about family. You can dig uh, dive a little deeper into that if you choose to. Just to, sort of give us your uh, what about who's Jabbar uh, type of overview for our audience. Good deal. And where I would start is just a man of faith. Uh, mm. That's that's my foundation. That's my footing has always been and grateful that my family has followed foot and uh, just a believer and the spirit allows us to just do what we need to do um, right. from being a, a husband and getting my direction to being a father and leading three children into this world that is a world uh, that will challenge you in every which way right. um, to really be in the foundation of why I started my business, j and Legacy. Um, without that foundation, I tell you what, I don't know how people survive. So before before anything, that is who I am. And um, thereafter, if there is a thereafter, um, just really have a heart for one, a business ownership. Our, our, our tax code is created for business owners and uh, get to take advantage of it from that front. But then two, really engaging who I want to, how I want to, and the process thereof. When I was in corporate America for 17 years, great place to learn. They grew me. They grew me um, to be able to come out and be an entrepreneur. But it was a get on board ship. It wasn't a steer your own ship. So uh, you did that to navigate up the corporate ladder, and um, it comes with sacrifices. Other side of entrepreneurialism, it's all yours. There's different sacrifices. There's different stressors. But at the same time, there's just a more deeper commitment um, because we do the black and brown community just because there's just a lack of resources from a financial stamp, financial resource standpoint. And so we're intentional about really impacting us and our wealth. Because as you said, at the opening, our wealth is the lowest here in the States and um, it's trending in the wrong direction too. So uh, the more professionals and resources that we do have in the community, hopefully the more people who we can bring on board, I won't save everybody, but we're going to do as many and reach as many people as we can. What, why are why are we trending downward? Um, right now, our median net worth is, let's say, uh, well, 
prior to 2022, it was it was about 24,000 median net worth for a family, right? Our white counterparts, our white brothers and sisters, their median net worth was about 170, 80,000. Um, so, so a significant difference. Now it has bumped because home prices have gone up significantly, um, but we're still, it, we, then it closed the gap. Um, it, 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 it just allowed our net worth to go up. Previous to that, uh, in 30 years, our net worth was slated to be zero. Our median net worth was slated to be zero. So that's what I mean by the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just don't buy, we cash flow is not the problem. We have money coming in. We just don't look at buying the right resources with the cash flow we have coming in. And hence the reason why it's, it's, it's trending in the wrong direction. Got it. So with our, with our cash flow, it sounds like we're either purchasing things that are liabilities and we're certainly not purchasing what I would consider, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, liquid assets. Not liquid assets and um liabilities another way to put it is depreciating assets mm -hmm. um uh we'll buy a car in a minute or and, and the car will be nice but as soon as you roll off that lot it's a 30 percent depreciation and it, it doesn't go up from there so uh liquid assets too we don't invest the money in the right type of vehicles or if we do any investing at all mm -hmm. um it's no right or wrong to but i can tell you the number of people I see with fifty, uh, hundred thousand dollars in a checking account or savings account, um, just not working for them. It's good right. to have, makes right. you feel comfortable, Ooh. but it's just an inefficient way to leverage and use money. And and once you understand how to use it, uh, uh, knowing that storing up large balances is not a, an effective and prudent way to use it. So again, it's all these factors that. We do things more so to make us feel good as opposed to doing what's logically correct and managing well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, man, with all of that said, what do you think or what's your take? And I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot and this is not, you know, you probably hadn't thought about second half living. You're a young guy. Uh, but oddly <laughs> enough, as we discussed, you're actually in your you're in your second half. <laughs> um, whether you know it or not or, or or whatever, what does that mean to you both, I think, from a personal standpoint as well as kind of a financial uh, wealth management, financial stability kind of legacy standpoint? I know that's a long question. Yeah, but a good question because unless you point that out, and again, we talked a couple of days ago, um, and I, I didn't realize I was in the second half of my life. I just never thought about it. So you're in I, it. I, I am knee deep, brother, knee <laughs> deep. Uh, unless you really think about it, 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 it it's, it's like anything else that you don't plan for. It just kind of comes at you. And, and and one day you realize that it might not even be a second half. It might be the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's just like, how do we get here? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 just with the introduction and, and, and the invite to be on here and understanding what the second half meant, it's a time to reflect. Um, hopefully you have something to look back on to say, hey, uh, I got a good foundation. I've accomplished some things. I, I've learned a lot. And now I have the ability to build on that and really start to cement my legacy. Um, you can see the name J&G Legacy. If it's not about legacy right now, then um, I'm not doing it. Right. I have no desire to do it. And that's that. That's where, where I think personally the second half should push you to what's your legacy yeah. um, from family um from from the people that you impact uh all your energy and actions where is that going towards um is it going to the next party is it going to the next weekend living for the weekend or is it going to something more substantial and lasting and uh i'm going for the for the latter uh, making sure that that second half is 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 really building upon the foundation that the first half has established uh, I played basketball growing up and going into the locker room at halftime. Um, it wasn't a time to celebrate. It wasn't a time just to stop the game or pause the game. It was time to go get the direction you needed to yeah. make the adjustments to, to to really go into the next half with it coming out winning. And, 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 and if you can learn anything from sports and adjustments needed, um, that's what the second half to me is, man, is making those adjustments, um, uh, implementing it. Um, running a play is necessary and really just, again, making sure that the blueprint is laid for the next generation. So 
unlike so many generations before us, we ain't got to start from, they don't have to start from ground zero. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good so, stuff. That's good yeah. stuff. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, considerably older than you, Audrey Barb, but um, I gotta, gotta ask this. Um, the core of your business is insurance and financial services. Would, would, would I be safe to say that? Uh, yeah, I'd say financial planning, investments, and insurance. Those three. Okay. That's a three-legged stool. Got you. And and the, where I was coming from was um, as I was coming up in, with uh, on the insurance side of things, um, you know, really all that I heard about in coming up was really around um, burial <laughs> coverage uh, and, and not much more. And then it seemed like the insurance industry kind of evolved at some point to pull more financial services kind of into it, or maybe it was the financial services pulled and pulled insurance more into it. But at, at, at a point, they seem to be kind of two separate entities that, that came together as one. Can, can you just talk about um, your business in, in particular and what it is that you all offer? Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm going to combine that with the, the, the second part of Darren's question which is the financial aspect, second half living yeah. and, 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 and join those two questions, really going out on my own, forming a team, providing the ability to really, like I said, speak the language of, of what needs to be said, right. not in a way that we have to be filtered, just the truth. And uh, Jill, you spoke it. I mean, a lot of insurance companies or insurance salespeople only came to our community to actually provide burial and service insurance. Yep. Not that there wasn't other products out there, is that they only sold us that because that's what we could afford, or that's what they thought we could afford. Got it. And Got so, it. and so now the dynamic of, of engaging the community in a way that one, I tell people this all the time, I have the worst, 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 worst business plan ever. Uh, 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 we marketing to uh us that have the least amount of wealth mm -hmm. and the sales cycle is is three times as long because you have to educate people yeah and to your point since we only had the burial insurance we don't know what how to actually use insurance or the other types of insurance or what it really means to leave a legacy through insurance right and so right. it's getting people with that comfort level of saying hey you are a million dollar asset <laughs> <laughs> You need a million dollars worth of insurance where right. they've never thought that I'm worth a million dollars before because we've never been taught to value ourselves correctly. Right. Um, right. And, and so that discussion wow. in and of itself that says that, hey, uh, one, I don't think I need that much. And I'm, why not? Right. But two, really educating people to the value that they bring to the table, the value that is them from an economic standpoint, not an emotional standpoint. Uh, but a very economical, logical standpoint. So when you look about someone who makes six figures um, and they're, let's call them second half, we'll call it 40. So we can do some some quick, easy math. There uh, you go. Uh, 40. So they got another, <clears throat> we'll call it 30 years to work. Mm -hmm. Let's say they're going to 70. They, they, they playing the long game. They ain't going to go 65. They're going to 70. So hundred thousand dollars going thirty years, that's three million dollars of future value. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to die yesterday, that's three thousand three million dollars lost in from your community standpoint, yeah. lost from your family standpoint. Yeah. So why wouldn't you get something to ensure that amount to make sure that hey, if it does happen to me, when it does happen to me, <laughs> right. <laughs> When it yeah. does happen to me, and life insurance is the only insurance that you know you're gonna use, right? Yeah. And, 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 and we 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 don't actually acknowledge that. But I digress. That's a whole another story. But getting that type of insurance in place and knowing my actual value says that now I can walk around with a chip on my shoulder because somebody told me I'm worth three million dollars. Right. I never thought about myself like that. Yep. So what if generations ago we had someone coming around instead of still selling us something to bury us by? Yeah. Yeah, they actually said that you are a million dollar asset. How would that change the way you carry yourself? How would that change the way you acknowledge yourself? And when it does happen, how would that change the position of your family? Um, and so and so that 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 piece, 
we talked about the three legged stool, financial planning, insurance, investments. The insurance piece is foundational. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't care if I gave you the best financial plan or I got you 2% more on your investments. If you're not around to live out your plan, Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter about the plan or the or the one or two percent I'm getting you more in return. You right. hear no more. So right. you have to foundationally set that to make sure that one, we understand what it is, the different types of insurance, but why it is so important and vital from a legacy standpoint and just from a perspective standpoint. And and again, start walking around with a chip on your shoulder because you should have that. So you should know your value. But I digress. I can go on and on about that aspect on it. So I'm no. gonna get off. Actually, I want to stay there because it's funny. You said that historically, you know, people in the insurance space came around to our community to sell us burial, ins burial insurance. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, and even, even now where we are, where there's so many other ways you can use insurance as a tool to build wealth and generational wealth and everything else, uh, why is it still, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and we, we, we're going to chop it up like brothers. I mean, I know we're all educated and all that stuff, but I got to, I got to, I got to bring some hood into this. If you don't mind, why is it that with all of that being said, people come into our neighborhoods to sell us burial insurance and everything else. Why is it that we still have so many people who have to have fish fries and cookouts and, and, and go fund me's to actually bury their loved ones because they don't have insurance. Great question. Um, and it's one that I, I, that's why I left corporate America to try to address it. Hmm. And it has to do with insurance ain't sexy. Um, insurance don't, insurance is protective. Insurance is defense. Mm -hmm. And let's go uh, on the analogy again. Let's go football. Since you started off with football and got on my Steelers, right? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's take it there. Uh, Offense wins games. I mean, yeah. offense looks good. Offense is what people come to and pay pay money for to see. But yeah. uh, defense wins championships. And right. defense is the way that you are going to go. Playoffs, when it, single elimination, that defense runs everything. Yeah. And so we don't like to talk about defense. We are so far behind in our community we we don't want to do what 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 is right or what is what what isn't sexy we're trying to actually get ahead or get to where we think we should be and that doesn't involve insurance that involves the more riskier i'm not going to name any well maybe i will name it cryptocurrency mm -hmm. new flavor right that came out several years ago everybody jumped on it got burned and unfortunately, when those sexier things come out, that gives you the ability to make a bigger return. And we get the highlights of the stories of people who made it and done very well. Right. A lot of people put their core money in there and they don't have the ability to recover for the next thing. If that wasn't it or they right. don't have the time to recover for it to come back around and be meaningful. And so in going after sexy to make up the large gap that we talked about before. Right. You forego the ability to do the things necessary. And so imagine going into these things using your core assets, not yeah. your extra assets, if you even have any extra. Um, but losing that or losing so much of it, you get scared and you, and, and you move out of that investment. You can't recover. You can't right. recover. Right. And um, I take it like this. Um, let me see if I can think of something that just recently happened. Uh, you have large corporations that buy companies, five, six billion dollar acquisitions. And mm -hmm. years later, they'll sell that same company for uh, 500 million. Right. They don't stop. It was a bad investment. They lost a significant amount and they don't stop. Right. If we do that, we stop. It's over. <laughs> it's, it's done. Yeah. And so and so with that being stated, again, we have to realize that, yes, OK, there are some things attractive that 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 may allow us to get further ahead, but we can't use our core assets and core financial positioning to actually take advantage of that. We have to take care of business first and then the additional delve into that. So that's the reason, Darren, to answer your question of, of, of why we don't do it, because it's not sexy. It just sits there. It's more of a bill than an actual asset that appreciates. And so therefore, I don't need it. And when I do need it, since you guys talked about health uh, uh, in the first quarter, I'm not healthy enough to get it. I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, all the time that 
life insurance is one of the most expensive things you can actually buy, right? Um, not pay for it, buy. Because if you don't have health, you can't afford it. I don't care how much money you got. <laughs> if you can't get approved for a policy, you can't afford it. And therefore, again, you can pay for it. And it is manageable from a payment standpoint. But on that second half of life, we're just now thinking about this and all the ailments that plague our community. It's just a little harder for us to even be in position to actually afford it and make it meaningful because, again, uh, our health isn't where it needs to be and we bought it too late. So hopefully it's early in the second half when they're considering it and, and reflecting on the first half and now doing the things from a legacy standpoint. It makes more sense, but it's just framing that conversation to be able to say, hey, we're going to make a move and do this. And, and we know the reason why it's important and impactful. And we're going to bite the bullet and make sure that my family is going to be OK no matter what. Well, I, I also think, and this and Darren, you're, I'm, I'm, I mean, Joe, you're on mute. Did you know that? Thank you. Yeah. 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 Here's the other thing. Um, and you said something about people buying and waiting until they're in their second half when, in some cases, our health starts to deteriorate uh, and it becomes more difficult for us to do so, uh, mm -hmm. meaning purchase the insurance policy. But I, I'd venture to say that there's some people that we have who follow us who either have kids maybe in their 20s, maybe some even in their 30s. Uh, and then we have even just some younger followers of our own. Um, I think it's time. And I think this is why we're doing this kind of this platform in this episode for for the young people who, you know, technically aren't in our demographics to start thinking about this. Yeah. Uh, Jabbar just nailed it. Don't wait until you're 50 to decide to buy an insurance policy because you're still living chances are your health at 50 is not as good as your health was at, at 2025. Right. Um, I think the other thing is parents don't wait to get insurance policies on your kids. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, none of us want to think about the inevitable. Uh, certainly, we want our kids to eulogize us and we don't want it to be the opposite. Uh, but sometimes it happens and we don't have insurance on our kids. Um, so talk about it as from a from a, even a younger standpoint, Jabbar, if you don't mind. Our mission at JNG Legacy Financial Group LLC is to meet our clients where they are, empowering them through education and sound financial strategy. Our priority is to obtain a crystal clear picture of our clients' current financials. As we assess your goals and objectives, together we develop an action plan suitable to your risk tolerance and time horizon. We understand that everyday people need guidance in all areas of their finances. So our process is centered around holistic strategies. Our unique focus includes understanding our clients' cash flow, their debt management, reviewing their insurance policies, planning for retirement, and estate planning. At the end of the day, we want each client of J&G Legacy Financial Group to achieve financial security and create a legacy for future generations. What's good, soulmates? This is your boy, Chill. Hope you're enjoying the episode. But well, we wanted to reach out to you and just say thank you for all of your encouragement and support of the Soul of a Man podcast. It's been tremendous, and we are grateful. We need your continued support, though. So while you're watching the episode, make sure that you click like, and also make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Truly, from our soul to yours, thank you. Now let's get back to the episode. Yeah, good point. I'll use myself personally. My kids got their insurance policies when they were under the age of one. <laughs> and wow. and wow. so uh, 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 theirs is a different as a permanent insurance. And, and one, uh, to your point, insurance will never be cheaper than it is when you're that young. Yep. And, uh, and there's things that you do to design it to make sure they have the ability to, to get more insurance when they're older without having to, to, to have a health exam. Mm -hmm. And so, and so now when they get of age to understand and I can show them this policy that has um, value associated with it and they say, Hey, well, what's this? And, you know, it's, 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 it's an insurance policy. And um, that money is in it. That's that's yours. You, you you can have that once you become of age. Now you're starting just to plant the seed of oh, this is an asset. Insurance is an asset that has some type of value attached to it. And 
now I have the ability not only to, that I have it now, but I can get more. Right. And, and and so it's not as taboo. And it's not only insurance, Darren, it's teaching kids just investment, just having yeah. those conversations to make sure that they can ask the right questions and 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 um and, and have the right discussions and just know the importance thereof. Uh, one of the things I just started maybe three months ago with my son is I, I quiz him every night. I give him a trivia question. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the first questions I ever asked him, I said, hey, how do you calculate net worth? Mm-hmm. And of course he didn't know, right? But assets minus liabilities equals net worth, right? right. Having that discussion with him, now it's getting him just the basic, the foundations to be like, oh, okay, this is important. Dad right. quiz me on it, so I need to know. And, yeah. and and I always go back to it to make sure he knows the equation because on the flip side of that, and it's getting away from your question a little bit, but it, I, I'll bring it back. Everybody can tell me how much money they made last year, right? That's pretty easy, but nobody can tell me what they're worth. Mm-hmm. And so understanding that, like, athletes let's just continue to, to go down that 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 stage athletes we know how much money they make they they make a lot of money and while they're making that money everybody's around them yeah but why yeah. do 78 percent of them go broke three years out of their respective league right right no matter if it's football hockey baseball they go broke yeah. nobody was paying attention to their wealth yeah so when the money's coming in everybody wants to be around but they're not even coaching them to the right things to be able to pay attention to Right. So it doesn't matter how much money you have coming in or how little you have coming in, you can still build your wealth and your value over time by doing the right the right aspects, right? Capturing more of that cash flow. Right. Right. Having that discussion just just at its very root cause of getting the 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 the, the definition of the book definition of net worth, it just starts to plant that seed of what's important, why it's important. Now I have an asset over here called life insurance. Before I had any other asset, it was foundational to me. My dad told me about it and he showed me my policy. That's great. So it's getting them in a groove of talking about it, discussing it, understanding why it's important, understanding that it's there and understanding what it means to not only them, but the family to come back around in the future to say, hey, when something happens to me, this is what's going to happen to you because I put things in place because of X, Y, Z. So. Building those seeds early, man. Planting them seeds early. Let them let them and water them. Let them grow. <laughs> no, man, that, that's that's amazing, man. So good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Uh, can I back up a second on the insurance piece? And can you give us a definition or explain the difference between ter- a term policy and a whole life policy? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll be even a little bit more vague. I'll do term versus permanent, right? Okay. Because there's different type of of, of, of permanent policies. Whole life fits in there, but that everybody mentions whole life, but there's there's several others too. Um, won't go down that line, but there's 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 whole life, there's universal lives, there's variable universal lives, there's index universal life. Wow. All those policies do in some way, shape, or form is that they actually grow and have a cash value component to it. Mm-hmm. So what that means is that uh, 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 as you pay a premium into those policies along with it providing a death benefit, it also provides a living benefit that allows you to use those funds associated with it. And again, depending on one, which one you choose, they have the ability to accumulate from different means, whether it's from dividends, whether it's from the market exposure, whether it's from index linked exposure, um, whether it's just from a, a stated interest rate. Um, and so we always champion permanent insurance. Um, and there's a key difference I go over, but why do we always champion permanent insurance, right? Because why would you want a, a, a temporary so- solution to something that's going to happen 100% of the time, right. unless, unless you're Jesus Christ? That's that's the only that's the only known. Well, Lazarus was in there too, though, right? Sure. Lazarus. I wonder if his insurance paid out too. Lazarus was in there too. That uh, <laughs> one was in the ground for a couple of days. But, but other than those. Um, you have you 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 have something that's going to be there no matter what long as you pay. So again, yeah. that's why permanent is important because again we know it's going to happen. So we want a permanent solution to solve for what's going to happen to the future. Now with that, you don't get as much death benefit that you get to the other side. Term insurance mm-hmm. and term insurance, um, for lack of a better term, has a specific time period in which you pay into that, and it's after that time period is up, whether it's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, 
the insurance doesn't go away, which is a common misbelief, the premium just goes up so high that the insurance company forces you to come back in to get reevaluated so they can reevaluate their risk. Gotcha. And so at the end of that period, it's, it's prudent of you to go back to the company to get re-rated to say, if I do still qualify and get either hopefully a permanent policy at that time or another term policy, just depending on what your other aspects of life look like from a, a standpoint of affordability. Um, and, and, and also too, I always say this, um, all those permanent policies out there, even term, um, what amount to get or what policy to get, yep. always have a purpose attached to it. Just don't get it because someone says you should have whole life. Well, mm -hmm. what is that solving for in my life? Like, right. <laughs> what am I attaching that to? Because if, if time gets hard, I just have this out there and I can stop paying it. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop paying it. Yeah. But if it's attached to something that's meaningful, that right. I know that's actually going to, it provides not only extrinsic value, but intrinsic value as well. I'm going to have an emotional attachment to that to keep it going even through those difficult times. So understand why you're getting it, not just having it to have it, right? So knowing that there, there are these different vehicles out here, is it possible for a person to have both term and whole life? Yeah, and that's probably the most ideal way, right? So term to make sure you get a, a death benefit large enough to cover your actual economic value, yep. whole life or permanent insurance, uh, universal life or index universal or variable universal life, whatever you're doing yep. to make sure that there is a, a, a more economic usage um, while you're living to, to to cover to cover whatever you're solving for. Um, you love the blended strategy because you're covering all fronts. Yep. And yep. Um, usually when you buy term is for income replacement. And therefore, what we talked about earlier, replacing that $100,000 for the next yep. 30 years. Right. You need a bigger policy for that. So it has to be cost efficient. Um, when you're looking at permanent insurance, it's more so, again, being more strategic about it, saying, hey, I'm going to put this in my portfolio for X, Y, Z case. And That's now good. I know how to leverage and use that accordingly. So Got blending it. those two out so you can have one, the 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 amount to, to fully account for your economic value, but then two, yep. to have it strategically part of your balance sheet is also meaningful. I think the most meaningful way to do it. Got it. I'm, I'm 60 years old. And I heard IUL for the first time this morning. <laughs> That's a good thing. You sh it I, is. I, I shouldn't be biased. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be biased. Were you shocked by it? Or, 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 yeah, or? I, was, I, I, it, it, you know, I was getting some information. And um, yeah, I was shocked, shocked by it. Um, because kind of all I've heard was term, 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 term. And um, but you know, truly part of the reason why we have you here uh, is because of the fact that I'm no anomaly. There's a there's a lot of folks out there, as you know, much better than I do, that just don't know the information. I can't say haven't gotten the information, but don't know the information. Yeah. So how, how do you, how do you draw folks in to, to get this message across? I'm sure that's the sixty four thousand dollar question um, in your in your industry. Yeah, um, great question too. And this is why um, being an entrepreneur is so much different. You have to have a strategy behind what you do, but you can't develop that strategy just on the outside looking in. You gotta be playing this game yeah. to yeah. really develop the strategy and know what, what's worthwhile. Um, when I first came into the industry, I would give information away freely um, and, and make sure people are educated. I would, I would hold meetings for hours at a time um, and just try to beat it into them. The more right. questions, the more answers. Hopefully, eventually, we're going to get to a point where they move in the right direction, right? Right. People don't value free. <laughs> <laughs> they don't value free. And so, and so with that, when I came out, I always knew this is where the financial planning aspect came in because now – Financial planning is so much more uh, inclusive and holistic in nature. The fact mm -hmm. now you're actually pinning strategy to someone's goals and objectives and making sure that they have the right resources and information available to help meet those goals and objectives. And so now when I'm talking to someone 
out front. It's not about, hey, I think you need $2 million of life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, great, Jamar. I don't think I need that. That's not what I came to you for. How do I get this money? All right, let's talk how we get this money. So <laughs> now we're going to talk the strategy. But at the very basis, foundational planning, insurance is going to be one of those things. And so there's five key areas that we kind of discussed. There's cash flow management, mm -hmm. um, meaning, again, I don't I'm, I'm not I'm not the budget police. I don't I don't I don't care about that much detail. I just want to know if you have a surplus or deficit at the end of the month. Yep. Um, then there's debt management. Um, not only are you getting the best interest rates, but uh, uh, how are you using debt to grow wealth over time? And are you even using it strategically? Big mm -hmm. question. The answer is usually no. Um, right. So debt management is the second one. Then there's risk management. And that's the insurance aspect. So life insurance, disability insurance, uh, PNC, property and casualty, homeowners insurance, uh, car insurance, um, long-term care insurance, um, all those you aspects. talk about that one. You know, don't let me, I don't mean to cut you off, but the long-term care, I want you to talk about that one at, at some point. Yep, yep, absolutely. But all those all those things that are in the blinders, making sure that we're accounting for that. Yep. Um, then the fourth one is the one everybody likes to talk about, right? The investment management. That's the sexy one. And hey, Jabbar, let me get this money into the market. Let me let me get a good return, man. How much can you make me though? So whether it's the <laughs> retirement accounts or whether it's just brokerage accounts, uh, getting money exposure to the market to 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 get a return. And then the last one, um, the legacy aspect, the estate planning. Um, doesn't matter if we do the other four phenomenally. If the next generation doesn't benefit for it, then it, we waste our time. Because now they're starting at ground zero again, and someone has to come reteach these same principles and gotcha. build that same foundation. Yeah. And so those are the five areas that we want to look at. Now it's a much more engaging conversation when I'm looking at those five areas, putting together a conversation as opposed to saying, "I think you need two million dollars of life insurance." Yeah. That's just going to cost you money, and and, and no, it's not going to be a great return. But yeah. Now I'm looking at these five areas, saying, "Oh, you want to do real estate." All right. Well, looking at your balance sheet, looking at these areas, this is a way that we can actually help you achieve your goal faster. Oh, you want to start a business? Well, foundationally, you need to have these things in place prior to starting that business. It'll make your life easier. Um, it'll still be hard, but it'll be a little bit easier having these these things in place. Oh, you're a W-2 worker and you're trying to uh, 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 climb the corporate ladder. All right. Let me tell you how these areas are important to actually help you achieve that, because if I can walk into a corporate meeting and I don't have any debt on my plate, I walk in a little bit differently because they don't control me. I don't need your paycheck. I can yeah, speak. Man. And therefore, you can see the true me and you can appreciate the true me. And if not, I can leave and go somewhere else and having that type of conversation. Yep. You start to get to more in-depth conversations as opposed to saying, hey, you need this now, chill, to bring it all in. Now we can talk about why the insurance aspect is important as part of that foundational goals, right? Got if you're it. going to do real estate, well, you're going to have $2 million of exposure because you're going to have to leverage up to get that. Who's going to pay that $2 million back? We'll launch the insurance policy to make sure that's covered at least, right? Yep. Um, you, you want to be an entrepreneur. That means you're not going to have benefits, company benefits to hold uh, your whole life. All right, now we need to do some things foundationally, make sure you have benefits. So when you do jump off, your family's not at risk too. Yep. It's yep. having more of an engaged conversation around that as opposed to just being so narrow minded that everybody's going to fall in love with life insurance, but they don't know what the heck life insurance is or why it's important. Got it. Got it. That's good, man. That's good. So, so let's do this, man, because I want to ask you about one of those one of those five sort of pillars. I actually probably want to ask you about a couple of them. Let's talk about the debt piece. Uh, I think a lot of times we've been educated. Uh, at least as best we could have been, that debt is a bad thing. Um, I, I know there are cases where debt's not a bad thing. That's actually, it, it's a good thing. Sort of talk people through that, Jabbar, because I think, again, we've we've been inundated with, you know, you shouldn't have debt. You shouldn't have debt. The whole thing in life is to pay off debt, not be in debt, whatever. But let's talk about where debt is actually an asset to us. Yeah. And debt's a tool. It's a tool that allows us to um, be able to afford things we couldn't afford. So um, the U.S. government has has told us that home ownership is one of those things that you should do. And therefore, they'll allow you to go into the bank um, if your credit is good and you have enough cash flow um, to to get a loan for, let's call it a five, 
round numbers, $500,000 home. And all I got to do is put, if it's my first home, 3% down. So that's 15,000. If it's not, and I want to be more aggressive, 20% down, which is $100,000, right? So I can avoid PMI. But the government is signaling to you that, hey, this is an asset that you need on your books. And we're allowing the system to actually let you use debt in a way to acquire this asset. And so, again, just take the signals from what people are actually promoting. Unfortunately, with us, redlining was around. And they didn't actually allow us to have that type of access. Right. Uh, it still goes on to this day. Companies are still getting fined for 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 uh, denying us mortgages and the right mortgages, right? So you know it's valuable, but they're not trying to keep it from you. Yep. To historically, they have tried to keep us from us, and now you're in a place where it's saying, okay, why are they? So why should I be using this type of debt to get this? Anytime somebody won't keep something away from me that I know is good, I won't get in on that. Let me <laughs> let me see if I can get in on that. So. Right. Again, that's the most front and center type of debt that most people can at least relate to, just right. because the simple fact that, again, is promoted so heavily. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about starting a business and growing a business. Uh, you need money for inventory. Uh, you talked about uh, uh, when Janelle started her, uh, 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 the, the, the trunk um, jewelry business, yes. right? Yep. That inventory, instead of using my money, I can go use the bank's money to establish that inventory to pay for it. And they have a fixed rate of return so I can pay them back off my earnings and allow me to grow exponentially as opposed to having this fixed rate. So you're buying things to actually enhance your ability to be in business, go in business, um, whether it's inventory, whether it's a building, uh, whether it's... Um, some of the soft stuff. I mean, branding is important, Darren. I know that's near and dear to your heart, brother. Yeah, As so. a marketing person, boy, if you get that branding right, and that's one thing we don't actually invest in is branding ourselves accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, and so making sure we're using that in a way that actually builds our value um, from a standpoint of building assets and right. uh, matching the right type of debt too. I want to I go there real quick because you hear stories all the time. Oh, I finance this with my credit card. Well, you weren't in position to do it the right way. You survived. Congratulations. But you're one of a million right. people who did it right. So they'll glamorize that. But the other the other nine nine hundred ninety nine thousand that didn't make it, they will just just out of luck. Right. Um, and so making sure that you're matching the right debt structures with the type of uh, 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 thing you're trying to acquire. I'm not going to buy a house with a credit card. Why would I finance my business with a credit card? Right. right? So right. last resort, maybe. But. You really want to start to get into making sure that, uh, uh, one, you're dealing with people who want to position you the right way to use that. But then, two, also, uh, uh, you're strategically using it for something that's going to add value um, to your business, to your real estate portfolio, to whatever thing you're going after. Got it. Got it. So, so in your business, really, it sounds more, for lack of a better term, like, one stop shop as opposed to maybe going to a brokerage and just getting one component of the full financial plan is it, is that safe to say man we spoil you our people <laughs> our clients who use us we spoil you. they ain't gonna get it nowhere else like we're doing <laughs> it and, and you're absolutely right and, and we want to because again information is so powerful it's yes. not power it's powerful yeah. Um, and, and equipping people with that type of information to know they're not going to get taken advantage of, point them in the right direction, what they should should be doing or should be looking for. Uh, you're not only equipping them, but they're able to spread the word. And right. so so we give our, our people so much more, one, because we need it because it hasn't been taught to us. But then two, from a standpoint of growing wealth, if I'm your advisor and I'm standing on having your wealth increase over time, I need to give you all the nuggets I can to make sure that that it's going to happen. And so, yes, we're, we're looking at all five of those areas, putting it together, making it relatable to you and hopefully having the type of conversation that says, oh, man, people call me for too much now. <laughs> Chill and DB. They be like, hey, uh, we think we want to go on this vacation. Can we go? <laughs> <laughs> have a good time. I ain't here for that. <laughs> have a good time. Um, 
we're gonna buy this house and want to buy this property they say call you first okay yeah yeah call me because this is significant yes right, call me. This is, right. This is, you know, let's brainstorm what this looks like and why we're doing it so yeah uh, it, it, it's funny because again they do use you some people overuse you yeah. but it's good to know that they're coming back to a reliable source that they trust to make those critical decisions so on, um, on that on that front uh because there are so many persons out there entities out there we hear it on facebook we hear it on social we hear it on ig all of this different information kind of coming at us uh for a person seeking an advisor um what sort of um certification licensing education what sort of things should that person be looking for in an individual or or, or an entity a company well, one, credentials are important, right? Um, you talked about whole life and you talk about index universal life. And I, the reason why I point those out because you don't have to, you only have to be insurance licensed to, to actually sell those. Um, the other one, variable universal life, you actually have to be securities licensed. So if I can't get securities licensed, I can't mention that. It might be a better fit, but I can't put it in my tool belt, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so you talk about long-term care. Well, if I'm not long-term care licensed, I really can't position into that conversation and, and, and look at the whole gamut of things. Um, yes. And so making sure that they have, I would say, at least exposure or licensing in those related areas, both investments and insurance, um, yes. financial planning um, is key. A lot of people champion the CFP. Um, that's good. But again, that's not necessary. Mm -hmm. I like life experience too. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't never had a promotion at a job or climbed a corporate ladder. And I'm trying to get up this corporate ladder. I'm coming to you as an advisor saying, hey, you know, X, Y, Z. And how does this work? Um, you can't advise me because you never did it. Right. right? Or right. you never bought a house before. And I'm like, oh, man, what's his PMI? Mm -hmm. I'm looking mm -hmm. at Google just like you looking at Google. <laughs> <laughs> what is BMI <laughs> and what can we do to avoid it? Like, right. like, <laughs> like have some life experience yeah. and, and yeah. incorporate that into, again, uh, 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 who you're dealing with and who you're talking with. Mm -hmm. um, I say that tongue in cheek. We just need more people out there doing it, but we need them doing it in the right way. And right. So I don't want to take away from people who aren't credentialed, but having more credentials does help to have a more robust conversation. And so, uh, 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 um, Investment licenses, your series six, sixty three, mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. um, life, health, um, disability, um, and just again, just real world experiences, always helpful in, in looking for a real well rounded advisor. Got it, got it. So my question is this, Jabbar. I, I think this conversation obviously is a conversation that needs to be had in many many ways it should be had in the barbershops it could be had you know at the dinner table with husband wife uh you name it. it it's a conversation that needs to be had probably more than anything um what can we do and i say we as meaning us as a collective and really the three of us here to continue to help push the the message uh so more people within our community uh, can become better educated on, on financial literacy and, and the tools that are out there to sort of set themselves up for success and more importantly, uh, leave that legacy? Mm. One, we can lean on each other, support each other. Mm -hmm. We don't support each other. And again, that's a whole nother episode that I know y'all going to do at some point in time, but just the lack of support um, and not because you're black. That 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 doesn't that that gets you ahead, nah. That gets you the what up. That right. won't get you my business, though. Right. Right. You gotta come with it to get my business. So <laughs> making sure that uh, uh, again that we're bringing it on both fronts. But two, even with that, knowing that from a resource standpoint, this isn't just financial advising or financial services. Black businesses are more strapped than our counterparts, mm -hmm. and yeah. so we don't have the tools and resources. So I think we're way too critical on black businesses all the time because we say, oh, I ain't going to go to them because X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that same discussion about other businesses, but knowing the predicament that we're in, not that it's an excuse, it's just the reality of the situation, yeah, acknowledging right. that. And and again, giving grace. Um, yeah. I started talking from the very beginning about my faith and that's all about giving grace, but we are way too critical 
uh, on ourselves uh, anytime we're trying to do something to better people. Um, so one is just, again, support in a way that's not detrimental, but uh, uh, it doesn't leave uh, 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 people in this industry, specifically financial services, at a detriment. The survival rate of a financial advisor after three years is 10%. Wow. I don't care if you white, black, blue, green, Wow. 10%. So ours is definitely lower. Yeah. So knowing that, how difficult it is, knowing the fact we don't have wealth in our community, it's a word battle to even stay relevant in this business or stay in this business period. Um, so the support is always good and necessary. Uh, secondly, don't make this conversation taboo. I mean, you should be having this at the dinner table. You should be having it at, at, at your social gatherings. Right. I'm going to go out to the club with you. We're going to talk business. I, I'm not saying got to be financial services, but hey, man, how's the job going? Like, are you climbing? Are you getting yeah. a shout? Or do you need to change a job to make sure that you're getting what you're worth? Like, let's talk a little business before we go out and have a good time. Let's yeah. make it more of a, a, a norm as opposed to an exception. Uh, that allows the conversation to not only spread faster, but for people to not be so intimidated by asking the questions. And right. so now it becomes of who we are and we're talking business and bettering ourselves in a way that's just conducive to what we're trying to support of all. And that's growth in, of our overall well-being, growth for our children, yeah. growth for our grandkids, if you dare, right? right? You got grand grandkids, don't you, boy? <laughs> no, I got one. I got a grandchild. I ain't no damn grand grands. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't that old. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dad. I had to throw that in there now. <laughs> um, but, but, but again, and, and, and I, I do that. I did it intentionally. This yeah. ain't got to be an uptight conversation. Yeah. You can have yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, people stress about it because they ain't got it. Right, right. And I understand and respect that, but at the same time, if you ain't talking about it, you will never release that stress off of you. Yeah. Get it off of you so you can find ways to actually get better yeah. from it and work yeah. your way through it. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I will say from a, just a community perspective and, 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 and how, how we can help one another is actually just be better ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, do the things necessary that if you are going to give somebody a chance that you're in a position to give somebody a chance, right? It starts with self, making sure that you're doing the things necessary to say that, hey, someone comes by and uh, they're selling bubble gum. Um, no, I don't want bubble gum, but here, dollar, take my dollar and I'm going to get the bubble gum. I'll give it to the grandkids, right? Mm -hmm. We don't position ourselves to give people opportunities, right? We're too tight with our dollars. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not positioned, and I can't blame you, but at the same time, having some accountability to position yeah. yourself to help the next person that comes along in a way that you want to see them succeed starts with self. So we have to be better as individuals to help the community as a whole. Gotcha. Right. I, I've got to, I've got to ask, and we're running low on time, but I've got to ask again about the long-term care insurance specifically. Um, my mother passed from cancer and she, she really had things in order for herself. It was a, it was a long, um, long process, a long battle, five years. So it gave her time to get a lot of things in place. So she has long-term care for herself set up in case it got to that. Ends up when she went into that scenario, she lived for seven days mm. and uh, transitioned. So, um, you know, it, it was it, it was interesting in that regard that it didn't become a, a true long-term situation. But I've seen those scenarios uh, with friends, with family that are taking care of older parents or left with the responsibility of taking care of older parents where some of that falls on those individuals and it's tough. Um, can you just talk a little bit about the long-term care piece? Cause I think it's a piece that, that we really overlook. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to frame it from the standpoint of just the risk management spectrum and, and get into specifics about it. Yeah. So first life insurance, we talked about life insurance. That's probably the cheapest type of insurance you can get from yeah. a standpoint, so property and casualty first umbrella policy. <laughs> life insurance the next cheapest is more expensive is disability insurance mm -hmm. and the most expensive is long-term care yep. right so anytime there's something that's more expensive or more costly 
you know, the likelihood of it happening is actually increased. Right. <laughs> so if right. we're talking about life insurance, just know that these other insurances out there, things that are going to happen uh, are even more critical. Yeah. Um, secondly, from a standpoint of, of retirement and just getting old, um, health is the number one reason people go broke in retirement. Um, they have the, that 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 long term care in North Carolina to go to a nursing home is about nine thousand dollars a month wow. um, for in home service is a little cheaper. It's probably about let's call it one hundred fifty five hundred seventy five dollars a day. Yeah. And so, again, these are expenses that it will exhaust your resources pretty quickly um, yeah. for a woman. The average long term care claim is usually about four to 4.5 years for a man is usually about two point some 2.5 they call it 2.9 years we die quicker right yeah. uh, i'm not even gonna go there i'm not gonna go why i love my i love my wife i love my wife i love my children <laughs> you're right yeah, but but that's all okay. great minds because i was thinking the same thing <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, um, but that long-term care piece from the standpoint of just length of stay is going to be more expensive for a woman because again their length of stay is longer uh yeah. and, and and so also too um just even understanding it uh, wh when to use it so there's there's six they call them adls um activities of daily living and you have to cross two of those thresholds in order to actually activate your policy. Mm -hmm. So even understanding when to actually use it or when it comes into play yeah. is important. Um, yeah. and, and there's just not enough people talking about it. Usually the optimal age to really start talking about is after 50, mm -hmm. right? Um, just because again, before then, the likelihood of it happening, not that great, but after 50 it starts to get incrementally more expensive. And so you want to start getting it as soon as you cross that threshold because each year you wait, it's going to get more expensive. But right. having that, and you don't have to, I mentioned the numbers earlier, let's call it $9,000 at a nursing home or $155, $175 a day for the house. You don't have to get a policy that covers the whole amount, yeah. but relative to your other financial picture, get something that you're not actually over relying on your other sources and that you're actually leveraging your dollar in a way that's going to make this event, if it does happen, a little less costly and 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 and, and um, painful in a family because to your point, it's usually all hands on deck, chill. Yeah. When somebody gets older, the families, people on shifts and things of that nature, yeah. um, it's the strain and yeah. um, and uh, it, it makes it hard for everybody. But at the same time, we don't want that person who's going through that to feel that they're a burden to us right. when they should really be focused on their health. So. Right. No, appreciate that answer your question. Yeah, it did. Pre appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, my, pe people just don't think about it. People just don't think about it. But yeah, uh, yeah appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate and, and and usually with us too. Uh, uh, and again, not right or wrong. It's just it, it is what it is. There's usually one responsible sibling in the family, um, and, and then that sibling's leaned on not only to take care of their family but to take care of the elders and things of that nature too. So yeah. it becomes even more so of a burden because you don't have all hands on deck too. It's, it's, it's right. one or maybe two people, two siblings out yeah. of five shouldering the responsibility, both economically and also from a living perspective as well. So uh, yeah. that responsible person in the black community, unfortunately is actually more penalized and it's more punitive just because we're relied on so heavily for, 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 for everything. Um, right. And right. it's not a bad thing. It's a blessing, but it's still something that you got to be a steward of. And it's and it's not a light load. Yeah. And that's if they're lucky enough to be in the same ge geographical location. Truth. Or, it's, a, it, it, it's a beast if you're away. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. that and you think about it, chill, in, in terms of our demographics, man, you think about us. Hell, some of us may not be in the greatest uh, shape health wise. So let's just say you have a couple of siblings and one or two happen to be older than you uh, and they're not doing the greatest health wise. How do you think they can, uh, you know, participate in taking care of a parent? Uh, right. So it's a lot to think about at this age. Yeah, yep. no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. We are at an hour and <laughs> I got a page of questions left. So 
Brother, we missed you in 23, but um, expect, to, expect to be back. <laughs> yeah. We got into it, didn't we? This, these conversations, boy. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. They, we, but we ain't done with you yet. We ain't done with you yet. We, 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 <laughs> we, we, we're getting close to done for the night, but we're not done with you. There you go. Well, just give me more than two days so I can be ready, ready. No, I'm just like, I'm just it's like not if, if this wasn't ready tonight, I'm scared. <laughs> 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 no, this is good, man. I loved it. I, I'm grateful. Thank you, brothers, for not only doing this because people don't realize the um, uh, dedication and the sacrifice that you're making to get this message out to the community. Appreciate and so, that, brother. And so they take that for granted, too. So yeah. thank you for being available and thank you for the invite. Uh, I don't take it lightly. Uh, and hopefully somebody got some 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 nuggets that they can at least chew on and, and, and share with others. Good yeah. deal. Well, look, man, I, I failed to mention this earlier when we when I introduced you, but I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it now. You are you and Nan are the godparents of my son, Logan. Or maybe I did mention it. I don't know. But I wanted to mention it again. <laughs> uh, I, I I always appreciate you. And anytime I get a chance to sit in front of you, whether it's in person or on a meeting like this, I want to express that gratitude uh, to the both of you. Uh, thank you again, man, for taking time out of your schedule to do this for us tonight. Uh, we look forward to having you back on because I think this is a conversation that needs to continue uh, until we hammer it home. Uh, you know, our goal is for anything that we do, if we can take care of that one person, it may not be the masses, but if it's that one person, then our job is done. Uh, we certainly like to get more, but uh, again, if it's the one, then I feel like our job is done and uh, we couldn't have done it without you tonight, brother. So again, we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, we look forward to having you back on, man. Love you, brother. God bless, man. Thanks for joining Love us. You, Appreciate it. Man. Thank you. Thank you.